The race of the year so far is on Saturday. It's Traverse Week, and we are going to be doing a deep dive into the pedigrees and past performances of the entire field. I'm Jessica Tugwell, and this is the Pedigree Puzzle. The Traverse, also known as the Midsummer Derby, is this Saturday at Saratoga, and this field is absolutely loaded with talent. The winners of all three Triple Crown races are in here, plus the two-year-old champion Forte. And there has been a little bit of jockey musical chairs going on coming into this race. As we all know, Javier Castellano rode both Mage and Archangelo prior to this race. But Mage's team announced on August 8th that he would be ridden by Luis Saez in the Traverse. Saez rode Mage in the Florida Derby, but he opted to ride Tappet Trice in the Kentucky Derby and has ridden Tappet Trice in each of his last five starts, which leaves that mount open for Jose Ortiz to get on. He breezed Tappet Trice this past Saturday. That will not be the only change for Tappet Trice, but we'll talk more about that later. Those of you who have been watching my videos have probably heard me talk about most of these horses before. So please bear with me if you've been following the videos up until now, as I will be repeating a lot of points that I've made in the past. If you're just looking for what I think of this race as it plays out, then you can skip to the timestamp below for race analysis. So let's go ahead and talk horse by horse, pedigrees and past performances of the contenders for the Traverse Stakes. We start off with Forte. This is the two-year-old champion and absolutely one of the most talented horses in the class. The concern with him this year has always really been whether he's improved from his two-year-old season. Personally, I think this is the horse who runs to his competition a lot. He's not going to draw off and win very impressively, but he always gets the job done. And we'll go ahead here and take a look at the Jim Dandy, which was a more of the same for him. Obviously, there was this controversial non-disqualification, but I think he really proved in here that he was just the best horse in this race. In that second bump, his hind end kind of gets knocked out from behind him by Angel of Empire. Angel of Empire really wanted nothing to do with Forte after they both got in the clear. To me, it really seems like he took that bump and just accepted the adjunct position off of Forte's flank. Forte is a horse who has never been beaten in close quarters. And those of you who watched the gallop out of the gym, Dandy might note that Saudi Crown did gallop out in front. But based on what Todd Pletcher has said about Forte's personality, him being a little bit hard to keep focused, it could just be that he knew his job was done in there. And he always just finds a way to get the job done, to do what he needs to do. He doesn't run bad races. He just hasn't really blown anybody away this year. When he added blinkers last time out, it did seem to keep him a little more engaged early. And I think that's a trend we'll see continue in here. To me, there is absolutely no question of whether he can win this race. He can. The question is going to be, what do you think fair odds are on him? For me, I would say that's probably in the five to two range. I think that he is a very talented horse and one of the best horses in the crop, but I do think that there are others in here who are just as talented, and I don't know if he has improved from last year or if he is going to continue to improve the way I expect certain other horses in here to improve. So he's tough for me to take at a particularly short price. Now, moving on to his pedigree, one of my favorite things about this horse is his huge female family, that being female family 1X. And these family numbers that I talk about are either a number or a number with a letter after it. The letters basically represent branches of the numbered families. These are designators, essentially, sort of like a matrilineal surname. And why these female families are important is because this is a source of a horse's mitochondrial DNA. This is DNA that is stored in the mitochondria of the cell, the part that converts food into energy. It's passed from mother to daughter and remains unchanged over long stretches of time. Therefore, all horses who share a common tail female ancestor will have the same mitochondrial DNA. 
And quick shameless plug, you can read more about these family numbers known as Bruce Lowe numbers, as well as equine mitochondrial DNA and why I think they're significant on my blog, Hawkstone Bloodstock. There's a link right there. It's not really handicapping information, but some of you might find it interesting if you like these pedigree deep dives. For now, the important note is that all members of Family 1X trace to the mare La Troyenne. I will absolutely be doing a full video on this family in the future because it's incredible, but uh, just a couple of standouts include Buck Passer, Easy Goer, Smarty Jones, Princess Rooney, and four of the last five Eclipse two-year-old male champions, including Forte. Interestingly, Violence traces to family 1G and therefore shares a mitochondrial haplotype with Forte's dam. So these are genetically the same family. There's also some interesting line breeding, which it would be repeating of key ancestors a little bit deeper in the pedigree to family 5H in Forte's pedigree. Both Sadler's Wells and Blame trace tail female to the mare special, the second dam of Sadler's Wells and the third dam of Blame. Clearly, Forte is bred to be a champion, and I wouldn't be surprised in the least if he continues to assert himself as the top of the class here. However, if I had to place a wager at this point of who would end up being the most talented horse in the group, my money would go on Archangelo. To me, this is the most likely horse to end up being three-year-old champion this year. I just think he is really talented, and I think this race sets up perfectly for him. We haven't seen him since the Belmont, and I think this is a horse that is bred to keep improving with age, so I think that we'll see something even better next time. In the Belmont, he showed his tactical ability. He was absolutely loaded early on in the race, but relaxed when asked, and he did get a dream trip coming through on the inside of the tiring leader National Treasure, but he proved to be much the best in this race. I expect him to be third or fourth in here again, just a length or two off of the pace. And to me, he is the most likely winner of the Traverse. The question with him is, again, are we really going to get any value there? As I mentioned, Archangelo is a horse that I think is bred to be a little bit of a late bloomer. His sire, Airgate, won this race and was absolutely dominant in sort of the breakout performance of his career. So I think that there's plenty of reason to think that Archangelo will also continue to show improvement as we get into the late summer and fall of this year. I did do a full video talking just about him. So please watch that when you're done this video if you want a full understanding of why I think we've yet to see the best from Archangelo. Spoiler alert, he has a huge female family and comes from a family that has produced two Belmont Stakes winners. The three horse in here will be Tappet Trice. And this is a horse that I respect that he's a good horse, but at this point, I'm not sure I'm ever going to pick him. He was disappointing in, ha in the Haskell, which I will admit was an odd spot for him, didn't fit his style, and kind of just seemed like Pletcher trying to find a place for him where he wasn't having to face Forte in the Jim Dandy. But he really didn't fire at all. He does add blinkers and gets a jockey switch to Jose Ortiz, which could be the wake-up call that he so desperately needs. But do you really want to bet on that is the question. He did work with Blinkers on August 19th, and you can watch that full work on xbtv.com. Now, I personally am just not a big believer in this horse, but if you are, this is definitely going to be, I think, his best chance for a win since his Bluegrass victory. And he's 12-1 to on the morning line, so I think he might end up actually presenting some value. But I just can't trust this horse. I cannot take him on top in any capacity in here. As for his pedigree, Tappet Trice is by a breed-shaping stallion in Tappet and is out of a multiple stakes winning mare by Belmont Stakes runner-up Dunkirk. He's bred on the same Tappet Unbridled Song Cross as champion Unique Bella, and comes from the immediate female family of Louisiana Derby winner Mission Impassable. He was a $1.3 million Keeneland September yearling and is clearly a very nice horse. I could definitely see him hitting the board, but he is not a horse I find remotely trustworthy in this spot. On the other hand, a horse that I do think is quite trustworthy in here is Mage. I think that as the Kentucky Derby winner, he's kind of flying a little under the radar here. We last saw him finishing second in the Haskell as a prep race. And I think this was a really good race. He came off the turn full of run. 
and just couldn't really keep up with Go Rocket Ride late. But this was always the goal for them. So he's going to be fitter for this race. And I think he's very dangerous. If he's anywhere near that four to one morning line, I think he might be present the best win value in this race. Like Archangelo, I also did a full pedigree deep dive on Mage, which you can find a link to in the description. So I'm just going to go over some of the more interesting points here. His sire, Good Magic, was a champion by Curlin. And the interesting thing about Good Magic is that he was a champion at two, whereas Curlin was kind of known for getting more later developing types of horses. So I think that's why we've seen such an excellent start at stud for Good Magic, who also has Scotland in here. Mage's female family includes the likes of Champion of Fleet Alex, and his dam was a stakes-winning half-sister to grade one winner Finnegan's Wake. What's interesting about Mage is that his female family 5G shares a mitochondrial haplotype or mitochondrial family with family 5H, the family of both Big Brown and Big Brown's dam sire, Nuriev. There are only two families known to carry this D1B mitochondrial haplotype, which is also found in hardy northern breeds, such as the Norwegian Fjord, Icelandic, and the Shetland Pony. This female family pattern is also seen in a fleet Alex, whose dam sire Hawkster is from family 5G. I think Mage is a very exciting horse, and as far as the top contenders in here, I think he is the horse who you will get the most value on come post time. Number five is National Treasure. The Preakness winner didn't really have a lot left after setting the pace in the Belmont, but does get back to a more reasonable distance today. He was already a winner, of course, at a mile and three sixteenths, but he got a pretty easy lead in there. And while he did have to duel to the finish and impressively did put away Blazing Sevens, I think almost every horse in this field is a better horse than Blazing Sevens. In my opinion, he would need to be left alone on the lead to have any chance, and I don't think that happens in here with Scotland, plus a whole host of others that have tactical ability and aren't really going to let him get away. This is a horse who I just, I'm, frankly, I don't have a lot of faith that he's that good, and if he beats me, then he beats me, and I was wrong about him, and that's fine, but I just don't really need him. I don't think that he is a Travers winner. As far as his pedigree goes, National Treasure is a half to a stakes winning sprinter, as well as a promising debut winner named Pirate. There's really not a whole lot of stamina in his female family. In addition to his stakes winning half sibling ultimate, his dam was also a half to a stakes winning sprinter. Quality Road's offspring do have an average winning distance of over seven furlongs, which helps him in that department. But it's notable that Quality Road himself was not an effective mile and a quarter horse. This Quality Road Medaglia d'Oro cross has been very good though producing 16.67 percent stakes winners in 24 starters next is disarm this is a horse i was very curious about him in the gym dandy i've always felt like he could be a late season developing type of horse but he didn't really do a whole lot in the gym dandy he just kind of chased the top three home his most recent victory was in the matt win stakes he was able to just run down verifying a horse who did come back to win the Indiana Derby. Disarm doesn't really ever run a bad race, but he has yet to get a breakout win against the best of the crop. However, he did still post an improving speed figure in the Jim Dandy, and I do think there's more improvement in his future. I'm just not sure that he's quite at the level of the best of this crop just yet. Looking at his pedigree, he's by Gunrunner and out of the Tappet Mare, easy tap. He is not the first stakes winner brought on this Gunrunner Tappet Cross, and he certainly won't be the last, as both stallions were raced by Winchell Thoroughbreds. The cross has produced five stakes winners, including the Grade 1 Winner Society, who we will also probably see run this weekend. Disarm is also from a deep and talented female family, going back to his third dam, White Jasmine, who is actually the fourth dam of Angel of Empire, among numerous other stakes winners. More distantly, this family 26 is responsible for the likes of dual Breeders' Cup Classic winner, Tis Now. And then the wild card of the group, Scotland. He's the new shooter. This is going to be his first time in against horses of this quality, but he has shown ability and versatility in his four lifetime starts. 
Most recently, he went gate to wire in the Curlin Stakes, but he rallied from last in his debut and came from off the pace in an allow at Churchill. The outside post, I think, is a huge benefit for this horse. He's so tactically versatile that Junior Alvarado can work out whatever kind of trip he wants from that outside post. He's also an improving type of horse and one who I'm excited to see how he matches up against the best of its crop. As a gelding, this is the kind of horse who could bring in a lot of fans over the next few years. And while I'm not quite sure he's ready to ace this class test, I think he'll give a good account of himself in here. Scotland was bred and owned by LNJ Foxwoods. He's by Good Magic and out of the graded stakes winner Gemswick Park, a daughter of Spitestown. He is the first stakes winner bred on the Curlin Spitestown Cross, but four of his first five dams were stakes winners, and he traces to a big female family. His fifth dam exclusive dancer of family 10A is also the tail female ancestor of horses such as Spitestown's grade one winner Dance to Bristol, Traverse winner General Assembly, Alabama Stakes winner Versailles Treaty, and at least eight other grade one winners. Scotland is versatile, talented, bred to be a nice horse, and is an exciting newcomer to this group. And now the question is, who wins the Traverse? This is a wide open and competitive race, and it's kind of a tough one to give picks for in advance, because I would pretty much be willing to take anybody in here at the right price. I think Forte, Archangelo, and Maid are all must-use horses in here. And when it comes to the win spot, I'm willing to drop Tabit Trice and National Treasure for sure. They're just horses that I do not trust. And I'd be willing to drop Disarm in Scotland too, although they're both a little bit intriguing. And I think that if you're looking for value, they could present it. But as far as running second in here, I, I could see absolutely any one of these seven horses hitting the board. Like I said, I don't need Tappet Trice in the win position. The blinkers on is a kind of interesting move, but I'm just over this horse. I never really was, I've always kind of just been waiting for him to break through and show this ability that everyone was raving about. And I just haven't really seen it from him. So I'm willing to toss him. Same thing with National Treasure. He should get a good trip, but I just don't know how good he is. And he's one that I really don't see finishing better than third. But if anybody is going to surprise me in a race like this, it's Bob Baffert. Disarm is one of those horses that I think has better days ahead, but eight to one is just a little bit short for me. I do think that especially if he sticks around next year, he'll get a grade one eventually, but I'm not sure it's going to be in the Traverse. However, I don't think he would be a shock by any means. And to me, he might be the most likely long shot to throw into the mix on top. Then you have Scotland, who is a bit of a tough read for me, but you absolutely have to respect his versatility and his advantageous post in here. Pace dynamics and post position favor him more than anybody else, I think, but I'm just not quite sure he's ready to step into these deep waters just yet. I'm definitely interested to see how he stacks up in here, and he's a horse I don't really know what to expect. And this is overall the kind of race where the way a horse is looking in the paddock or on the track could make me lean a different way. You know, if they go out there and one of these horses just looks ready to take on the world, I might lean more heavily into that one. You know, if Disarm or Scotland just look like a million bucks on the track, then maybe I throw them in on the win position where I wasn't really considering them like that before. Or, you know, if, if Archangelo looks like he did before the Belmont, just uh, ready to go. Uh, I'll probably key him on top in some exotics, kind of uh, showing my hand here, that as of the time of recording this on Wednesday, Archangelo is my top pick. I think he'll be tactically positioned to take over from National Treasure and Scotland, and I think he's talented enough to hold off the closers like Forte and Mage, who I do expect to run really great races as well. So I have a 214 exact a box. I know it's the top three morning line choices, which I kind of hate doing, but I'm thinking that with such a wide open race, I feel like it'll pay even if it does chalk out. And I do think that these three are just a cut above the rest of the field in here when it comes to raw ability. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please give this video a like and let me know what you think about the Traverse. Who do you like in here and how do you see it playing out? Also, make sure you subscribe. We have tons of great content coming out on the channel and especially a bunch of great stuff for Traverse Week to get you prepared for all of the action this weekend. 
Until next time, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.